Hey everyone, we're going to do a DIY cracky setup using a milk jug. Alright, come along. Hey everyone, so we're going to make a DIY crack key milk jug. So what you want to do is get yourself a milk jug, rinse it out really good, um, make sure it's nice and clean, do all that kind of stuff. Um, doesn't matter if it's a white one like this, I know they sell clear ones, um, they'll all work. So what you're going to do is you're going to have to get it, take it, clean it out, and then paint it so that you, no light can get through. So with the modern miracles of technology, we have a painted bucket or jug. I know you caught me, it's not painted. It's too cold to paint, it's 17 degrees outside. So what I did was I wrapped it all with aluminum foil and I used packing tape. So what we're gonna do today is if you have an arrow garden or know somebody who does and they have the little pods that you use to grow in like this one, we're gonna use this. These fit, this will work in any container that has the same size um, lid. So you see it goes into there. You can actually push it all the way down to the little lip. There's little knobs on the top. You can push it all the way down and that's nice and sturdy in there. Now what I'm going to do with this one is I have some one inch Rockwell cubes here that I'm going to use because they actually fit pretty good in those. And before I soak these, I'm actually going to fill this, fill the jug, and make sure I have the level of water that I need. So normally, these, these are, these are kind of crappy ones. These were, I bought these by accident one time, but they ended up working out for these. So this first one, we need, we want this all the way down to the bottom, and the second one goes in and touches the top one. They're a little bit big for that. So what I do is I actually just trim them at an angle just like that, like on the four corners. Just to make sure that this one will go all the way down to the bottom. And you can test it, make sure, and it'll go all the way down to the bottom now. These are already open because I, I grew in these, so I actually had to cut these open to get all the roots out. But that's okay because it's not going to fall out. Then the second rock wool, you can pretty much leave just the way it is. And you just kind of just put it in there so it's it's touching so that this one will soak the water up and it'll soak this one as well so now i'm going to fill this jug so that when i put this in there all the way down and check it i want it at least about an inch up on the bottom so that's why i didn't fill the jug yet and i didn't soak these yet just so i could check the water level because it's going to be hard to see the water level so well now we'll be right back. I'm gonna put some water in the jug and we'll go from there. Okay, so I just uh, put some tap water in here. I'm gonna push this down in, pull it back out, and you can see it's wet just about there. I want a little bit more than that. So I actually have a jug here with water in it too. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit in here and it's gonna get all over. I do want to add, I used water directly from the tap, which is chlorinated water. But by the time that the seeds sprout and start to get to the water is going to be at least probably a week. Um, and most of the chlorine should hopefully be evaporated. Um, 
or you can actually use water that you've left out for a couple of days. Um, so they, so it, it has dechlorinated. Um, but that's why I just did this with regular tap water. So by the time it sprouts, get some roots down in, most of the chlorine, I know I'm blocking the hole, um, but there is air that can get in there a little bit. Um, so we're going to see what happens. My recommendation would be to put your water in the jug, let it sit for at least a day or two, um, just to get most of the chlorine and stuff out of it. That way you know you'll have success, and it's just a, it's a better practice. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing. Push it all the way in, check it. Okay, so that's uh, just about covering the first, first rock wool. So that's good. So now we'll just set that in there. That will soak up the water and get everything wet. And we're gonna leave it until the, the rock wool cube soaks up the water so that it's all, the top one is all wet too. So as soon as that's done, we're gonna go ahead and uh, plant our seeds. So we'll be right back when that's all soaked. It'll take a couple minutes. Okay, so it's, it's been probably five minutes. Um, it took a little bit to soak it. You, you can actually take it out, um, take it to a sink and actually soak this with water. Um, then you can put it back. Now you will notice that it does rise up a little bit and that's fine because it's gonna stay in the water. So I'm growing little gem butterhead lettuce in this one because that's our favorite lettuce. So I'm just gonna wet my chopstick. I'm gonna do two little holes. Actually, because I've had some germination issues, I'm actually gonna put four seeds in this little rock wool cube. And I'll end up snipping and just leaving one. But I have my seeds out here. So I get it wet, it picks them up nicely. I'll put four of them in there. Okay, so now I have four seeds in there. Let me see, I got this new contraption for my phone because my camera died. So it's a tripod, so I'll bring you up. There's four seeds. I didn't use the center hole. I put four kind of around the edges. Now this is a heading lettuce. It's a 30 day lettuce. So if you're growing a leaf lettuce in here and you wanna use it as cut and come again, you may have to add nutrients as you go. Um, but at any given time, once your plant is mature, I wouldn't add any more than a couple inches in the bottom to make sure you don't drown the air roots. If you're gonna leave this go, the idea with this is 30 day lettuce, one gallon of water will sustain it until I harvest it and then I'm done, at least for me. Um, heading lettuce is a little different because you can let it grow and continue to grow, but you may have to add nutrients. So you'll just have to figure that out by weight because naturally you can't see in there. But So once you're done with that, go ahead and take a plastic bag, put it over the top cinch it closed that's not critical you just want to try to keep some heat and moisture in there I and mean, you, you could even lay it down just like that and then set that under a grow light so if you have a light like a shop light type of thing like this one where it's a bulb you can grow this under a 5k bulb um, the brighter the more lumens the better um, that means you don't have to have it as close to the plant, but if you get an LED bulb Put it like right over it like that and Then once it sprouts then you can take your baggie off And then you can adjust your light as the plant grows and keep it about you know 8 to 10 maybe 12 inches above the plant as it grows um, after it sprouts and it gets its first set of true leaves that's when you can add your nutrients to this. So if you're growing, if you're gonna use um, General Hydroponics Maxi Grow, which is, which is great for this, 
at that point you can actually take this out you should see hopefully some roots coming out of something either on the sides or out the bottom most of the time they'll start coming out the sides before they go all the way to the bottom but you can take this out add your nutrients save your cap add your nutrients put your cap on shake it up make sure it's all nice and mixed in good then you can take your cap off put that back in and you're done so that now is just going to go somewhere uh, I'll probably put it over here by my tomato so we'll probably move this guy over on the side actually I'm gonna put this on my shelf So I'm actually going to put it up here because I do want the light to be kind of close. See if I can. And I have these little, this little clip on light. So I will actually. Mess around with that. I don't like staying up. You know what? I'll put this underneath there. That'll keep it up. These don't let off a lot of heat, but it does let off some heat. So it will actually help, and you'll see moisture build up in there. And the heat just helps it to germinate. So that's where it's going to stay until it sprouts. And then, I don't know, I'll move it under something. But that's how you can reuse one of these arrow garden pods um, if you if you have an arrow garden and have grown in them before um, other ways you can do this if you have if you use rock wool you can use anything that will fit in that container opening and then put a rock wool cube in there i'm actually going to try a couple things um, coming up in some some other videos um, to try to not utilize some net cups and rock wool cubes and stuff like that but for now that's uh that's what we got um and I'll, i'm reusing my pods and using rock wool to do that so once those sprout i'll add some nutrients those shouldn't take more than maybe a few days three four days hopefully to sprout as long as the seeds are good and then uh we'll wait till it gets a little bit of true leaves on there and we'll add some nutrients all right, simple DIY hydroponic crap key container. All right, hope you guys liked the video. If you did, click the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and feel free to ask any questions if you have any. All right, till next time, grow something. See ya.